Yeah, we are, like Mark has mentioned before, we're meeting together with people in these events in an experience that is a shared experience. And we have within that context, the ability to share something with the music, with the visuals, and also with what we share, what we speak about. So yeah, it's, it's a very important role to be in and to choose with great discernment what one would like to speak about in those kind of environments. Hello and welcome in to another Chi Time, your conscious living show with me, Clara Apollo, here on UK Health Radio. And on this episode, I have for you the collaborative duo that are hang massive. Yes, Danny and Marcus are on the line, I'm poised to come in to interview again. I spoke to them last year about their incredible music and their ethos and what percolates through all of their sounds. Now, they have become a global phenomenon. The music they play is via a hang, which is like um, a, a, a steel pan, which is lightly sort of cast in such a tuneful manner. And it just really raises your vibration, your, and your frequency. So they don't sing while they do this. They literally play the sounds and allow the rhythmic melodies to, to touch your heart and uh, reverberate around your whole system. So it's hugely healing in, in a, such an enjoyable way. And I'm really looking forward to talking with them here about their new album, Luminous Emptiness, which they successfully crowdfunded. So there's a huge vibe of support for these guys. They are totally loved and I am honestly honoured to have them here with us on Chi Time for you. So let's go to Danny and Marcus on the other screen. Welcome Danny and Marcus, how are you doing? Hi, very good, thank you so much. Well, you're so welcome, it's an absolute thrill and an honour to have you back on the show. And Because uh, it's been over a year since we, we chatted and it, uh, we hadn't even met each other then. And um, you were phoning in from the southwest France that time. So where are you today? We are in Sweden, about half an hour outside of Stockholm. Okay. Have you been doing some gigs there? No, we're preparing for our shows in the UK. Yay. <laughs> Which one of them is going to be in Bournemouth? Slightly excited about that. Um, and the other one in London. Now, now mm -hmm. this, this is all um, around your new album. So let, let's just do a little bit of a backstory here for people that might not know about what it is you do um, mm -hmm. and um, how you all came to be working together. So first of all, the extraordinary instrument that you play, this hang, how did you come across that and how did it really beckon you, call you into to its world of uh, sonic sounds? Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been quite a while now that we're playing the instrument. Uh, we both met someone playing um, many years ago, 10 or more years ago. Um, initially, it was just one couple making the instrument in Switzerland. Now there are people all over the world making them. It's become much more available. Um, the, the name of the original instrument is Hung and the generic name for all of the other instruments now made by other makers around the world is hand pan. Um, we, when we met, I was playing the instrument. I had two of them, so we started playing together. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. It's your history. And you, you, but if you, so you were originally from Bath, right, Danny? And I'm from Birmingham. From, so I'm from Birmingham. Okay, yeah. but you, you lived in Bath for a while. Yeah, when we first met, then we went back from India to Bath and we spent a few years playing there in the street. Yeah, yeah, in fact, this is on your last cheat time. You were talking about how um, versatile this instrument and that you're playing together is you can play it on the street, you can play it on the beach, you can play it on a bridge, you can play it up a mantle, you can play it in, the, in, in stadiums where you've been playing some really big gigs around the world, haven't you? You have a very um, strong following, people that like to come and experience it. What's, some of the um, photographs that you share with us are extraordinary. The, the lighting seems to be really key, but also the look on everybody's faces of that um, connected community and uplifted vibe. I mean, this is, this is really what you do, isn't it, with your music? That is exactly what we do with our music, yeah. 
Yeah, it's fantastic to be able to come out in the world and just meet so many amazing people and just to gather in these amazing concerts and spend time together and just share yeah, the instrument all together, but also the incredible vibe of everyone that comes. And with us, it's like a, such a great collaboration between fans and artists. And so what, in all the photos that you see, it just, yeah, they are, some of them is great photos that just shows the amazing time that we get to spend all together, actually, which is uh, such a gift for both of us to be able to facilitate such a happenings all around the world. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Facilitate such happenings around the world. Did you, did you dream this into existence or did it just kind of um, occur as part of your own practice and where you've been guided to be? I would say that we, many years ago we saw that there was a possibility for such a thing to occur and we had a long-term vision which is still in place of what the potential end result can be and then we had an immediate first step to start to actualize that and then since then it's just one step at a time we continue the expansion into the end result and you know you mentioned the practice like it is the whole thing is infused with our practice and not the not the practice of playing the instrument we are both since more than 10 years we have a teacher, it's a Zogchen teaching that we participate in, um, the context of our personal relationship, the context of our business relationship, the context of the music, the context of the people that we work with and the way that we do it is all held within the context of our practice. Like the, the, the practice is the primary thing and everything else falls into place not behind that is not the right way to describe it, but that is the context in which all else is held. And this is why it's so beautiful what you do. It's got integrity and truth running all the way through it. And, you know, when you came to crowdfund your new album, Luminous Emptiness, it's like, it just happened because you're not trying to sell this. You are sharing an energy of um, connection, clarity, and expression that peaks off with other people. That it's not that they want a piece of it, but they they want to be like involved with how your music affects them. You know, I'm speaking from personal experience here. You know, to to really have your music as part of my life has been so rich, and I thank you hugely for that. But thank you very much. And you know, with the with the new album that's something that's been even more crystallized into, into the way that it's been done. Um, <clears throat> the album has, is a project that's been done very much in collaboration with our teacher. She has named the album Luminous Emptiness. She's named all of the tracks on the album. The, the entire project is infused with our relationship with her and I think that has brought even more of a potency to the music that has the ability to bring a, yeah, a sense of relaxation a sense of empowerment to people more I mean th that's always been there running through our music but I feel with this the way that we've done this album it will be even more the case Definitely, because you have done a lot of collaborations in the past, really successful ones. And your choice of this album was to bring it back to the two of you and the, the energy that you come through. So that you've just explained beautifully um, why that is, really. It was, it was time for this next stage to come through like it has. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Wow, um, I'd love to play a track underneath this. I know we're going to play one of my favourites at the end. I actually haven't heard the whole album yet anyway, but I mean, of course, because you haven't released a lot of it, but you were releasing um, little snippets, videos of you recording it, which was just like bits of magic coming through. Um, and I wonder if there's one that we can play underneath here just for people to, to listen to. Um, which one do you think we could do? We could do uh, The Secret Kissing of the Sun and Moon, as we already released... Um a video for that track, which is something we made 
you made an amazing video in the far north of India in an area called Ladakh, which is a place that has a history of the teaching that we are participating in, something that runs through those lands for many thousands of years. So it was very fitting to go there and make the album there. Um, so people can see that on our YouTube channel video and uh, yeah, be, be, be a great one to play now. Well, yeah, let's play it in the middle of the show. Let's do it. Um, and then we can come back and speak with you after that. And I would just like to add something to this, um, Danny, because um, this title of, and Marcus, because I know you've been doing most of the talking, that's why, Danny, yeah. but, um, to both of you, was this title, The Secret Kissing of the Sun and the Moon. It um, corresponds with part of the primordial Qigong practice, which is called The Sun and the Moon where you bring in the energy of the moon to your lungs and the light of the moon to nourish the lungs. And at the same time, you invite in the golden energy of the sun to your heart. And I would just like to invite listeners and viewers if they fancy doing that at the same time as listening to this, this is what I do when I listen to this. Um, it's really, really magical, proper amazing stuff so let's play that and come back with you in a moment after that thank you
notes, just sound. So good to just bask in the glorious of unending brilliance. And there's a, there's a radiance there, isn't there? It, sort of, it, it becomes one as one listens as a multi-leveled layer. I'm using words, even though I said no words, but we're on it in interview, but the, it is multi-layered. This is extraordinary and, you know, I think because you don't sing at the same time, there's space there for other information to come through. Yeah. There's space for the space to come through. Let's talk about space. <laughs> <laughs> space, yeah, there is not enough space in our world, right? Or there is, there's plenty of it, but we fill it up with so much and everyone's so distracted and expecting. To, we, we really pressurize ourselves so much. So in that space that your music helps us to regain is the truth of being and i'd love you to talk about what space means to you i mean i don't i don't we don't see it that space is something that needs to be regained as if it's something that has been lost the space is ever present like the space is everything is spacious Luminous emptiness is the nature of reality, regardless if it feels pressureful or if it feels relaxing, if it's full of busyness or if it's sitting bored on the side of the road. Like spaciousness is the nature of all experience. And that, I mean, that is something that's easily recognized and it's possible that there is, you know, music and things that can help to elicit that. And I think that that is something that people experience when they listen to our music. Regardless of the language that people have to describe that, within our practice we have a, yeah, there is a language to describe that because it's something that's been described in some cultures for thousands of years. So there is a language and terminology to, that describes reality in that way because it is something that has been known and practiced for a very long time. But, you know, just even reading the comments on the new video on Facebook and YouTube, you see that people experience that and then they have to some degree or another ways to describe that with language. But what's most obvious is that people sense in that that there is something that has been previously often unnoticed. And this is what it means, the secret kissing of the sun and moon. It's that there is the crucial juncture where the spaciousness and the solidity, seeming solidity, where the two meet, like where the sun light hits the surface of the moon, and reflects brilliance. This is the crucial juncture of awareness and described reality. And until now, for many people, it is something that is unknown, but not because it isn't the nature of reality, but because it is secret to some degree. Hence, the secret kissing of the sun and moon. This is reflecting of the crucial juncture of description and awareness. Exactly like that. so that's, that's, how we, that's how we see everything. That's, the, that's the, I love what you're saying about the spaciousness is always there. It's always there. It's encapsulating everything. It's just that we fill it all with stuff. But it's always there. What do we call holding space? The space is held. It's all around. And tapping into that. I w always think it's really magical as well when the sun and the moon are in the sky at the same time. That feels to me like a, a special moment of celestial connection that then resonates and um, offers more, more space to, to flourish. And I was going to ask you, Marcus, about this word, this word flourish, because it, it, it seems to come up a lot around the balanced view, which is what your, um, what your, your practice is, but also around that your music um, is flourishing as you are. And uh, it encouraged is that in, 
in other people again, you know, what is it about this word flourish? It's not just survival or thrival. There's something about flourish that is, seems to be really special. I think the main importance for me anyway, when I look at my life and in all the different ways that I choose to relate to myself and the choice I make in every moment to either be preoccupied with thinking about my actions and thinking about my part in this beautiful existence. When I actually did get in touch with a teacher and a practice that allowed me to rest deeply in the basic space of everything, then something occurred that is beautifully and naturally flowing from that space. You know, so that to flourish is for me, it's not a thing. It's not something that we can teach each other by studying some pre-recorded idea that somebody else had about flourishing. Flourishing occurs when we take full responsibility for the timeless existing space where, which in, where we all live. And we find a practice that align ourselves in that moment with that basic space. And only from there, I feel for myself, I have been able to flourish ultimately and also make amazing choices every day that will benefit me and everyone that is around me. And I feel hang massive and our dedication to practice in this way is what allow us to also share that with our audience or with the, just the people we say hi to in the street or, you know, in everyday life. It's not that we need, we, our practice does not lock us in on a pillow in a dark room or in the, on the mountaintop or, you know, we are not locked to, in a specific circumstance to practice our practice. It is with us in each moment, every day, waking, sleeping and dreaming. And that is where I found that, yeah, if everyone could just never give up until they have found such a place where that practice becomes obvious, you know, this is what I want everyone to do. I believe that there's a teaching for everyone. And I believe that everyone can find, if they want and if they now choose to, an activity or a way to relax in each moment of their day. And that is basically all I want for humanity, to thrive for that simple, simple thing in their life that we have found, for example. And this is what allows us to spend this beautiful time in this beautiful life with so many glorious people all over the world like yourself oh thank you very much no wow absolutely and you mentioned that word simplicity as well you know the simple practice of being and can be so overlooked but you're you're so right that's that's where the fountainhead of your energy is from taking care of self and uh, connecting with that which is. Yeah. Everyone's energy, everyone's space. Yes. Yeah. Wow, and your music just um, helps us all. Uh, wow, I cannot wait until we see you again. So last year we um, cordially invited Hang Massive to come down and play in a large hotel room on the south coast in England, um, Bournemouth. And you did a splendid job, but we were absolutely rammed. I think we had more people in there than should have been. But um, we're really looking forward to you coming down to a, yeah, a proper theatre this time, Shelley Theatre on the 18th. You know the date? The the 18th of the 9th, 18. Well, that's just okay. a little poster here. I think this is a really magical date. Um, oh, yes. 18, 9, 18. Yeah, Ooh, that's really special. Um, we've got the incredible um, Alexandra Gabriel in, in support with you there. She's a phenomenal singer um, and brings through just the most, the clearest goddess en energy. I think it's going to be a very high vibed evening. and. Um, want of a better phrase so it, uh, it'll be connective but before that on the on the 8th of september mm -hmm. the glorious union chapel in london i love that venue oh wow um and you say you're bringing in um this is going to be a launch for your new album isn't it the um mm -hmm. 
That's the, that's the release date of the album. That the album, lovely. And you're going to be using a lot more visuals with your live performance now. Is that coming back through these, like you said, that amazing video for the secret kissing of the sun and the moon? And, um, and that the... is part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to sort of... Based on, it's based on feedback from previous tours. It's based on, you know, we're always looking to optimize and increase just the all around epicness of our live performance. And we have, you know, we've done some shows before that have had visuals from just people that have come on the day and done visuals, but the visuals that we're working on now are very specific. They're, yeah, they're specifically related to our teaching. They're related to our teacher. Um, they are visuals that honor the, the culture and the history that has preceded this tradition. And they have the, uh, you know, the ability to support this environment of relaxation and, and empowerment, which we like to offer at our shows. So yeah, they will add an incredible new element to the show. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Very specifically, it's a very specific thing that we're working on. So, is that what you're doing in will, the Union Chapel? Will just be the start of that process, and then as we progress over the coming years, I think it will be something that we work a lot on. Yeah, it, well, it keeps people really engrossed in this immersive experience, and when they have that immersive experience, it is theirs, and nothing, nobody can take that from them. It's something, a point of reference for them to come back to is that's how I felt my true that's how I was really with me and, and in community as well I'm loving this mm -hmm. that we gather together and when you speak in between the tracks as well Danny that really is um, profound um, teachings that you're bringing through so let's hoping there's going to be more of that yeah that became that became kind of part of the show really I mean yeah there's normally at least some one place in the show where I say something <laughs> at least yeah no but that's that's just gorgeous so keep that up and um it's, again it's like we this is kind of sound, now i'm going to sound like i would sound at the concert but we live in a time where the sources of media and knowledge and information that we have available to us deliver a very limited scope of information and, you know, obviously through the internet, we have the ability to have a, access to a much wider range of information than prior to that, when we would have TV, n corporate newspapers and like, you know, so we obviously have access to so much more knowledge than ever before. And, you know, we, we are now in a position where yeah, we are, as Marcus mentioned before, we're meeting together with people in these events in an experience that is a shared experience and we have within that context the ability to share something with the music with the visuals and also with what we share what we speak about so yeah it's, it's a very important role to be in and to choose with great discernment what one would like to speak about in those kind of environments yeah yeah absolutely so if you would like to find out more about where you can see Hang Massive in the UK this year. So these are the only dates you're playing this year in the UK, right? Yeah, the only dates we're playing this year. Yeah, full stop. So this is we over. Took a break. We took a break this year to really work on the show, to focus on the production of the new album, making video content to support that. Um, so other than these two gigs, the, the main tour will be next year running from March through till the end of May. Wow. So these are the only gigs that are happening this year, actually. Wow. So Tonight, hang after the last two years, we needed a little break also for... Uh, I bet you did, for sanity's yeah. sake, because you were really yeah. on it, weren't you? But anything you want to find out about Hang Massive, you go over to hangmusic.com. So all your events are on there and people can link up with the Union Chapel gig and the, uh, the Bournemouth one there. And, and um, yeah, I'm getting excited about next year, but let's just do one gig at a time. Yeah. <laughs>
And um, I would love to also play another track from your new album, if you will permit this. Um, for this will be an exclusive, actually, because uh, you're probably going to release the video of the interview before we release the album. So this will be an exclusive listen for the people fortunate enough to see the video. And uh, the track is called Warmth of the Sun's Rays. Again, it's just, uh, we are basking in ever glory of each moment. Inseparable. And um, it's a great track. It's the second track on the album. And uh, yeah, people can enjoy it now. Thank you. Thank you too so much for sharing the wealth of your wisdom and sounds with us here on Chi Time. See you soon. See you in Bournemouth. Yes, Very see soon. you in Bournemouth. Yay! <laughs> and uh, thank you all for listening and watching, dear Chi Timers out there. I'm sure this has been an absolutely epic show that you've enjoyed. And um, here is an ex a Chi Time exclusive for you, the, um, you. The, the warmth of the sun's rays. So let's, from my heart and from Hangmas of Danny and Marcus's heart to you, let's beam and bask together in the radiance that is luminous emptiness and health. Great fortune. Great fortune indeed. Keep your chi up, my friends. <laughs>